you're probably wondering what we're doing. This was us when the 3090 Ti was originally released. We wanted to make an insane build to try and get into the top 20 on the Time Spark Stream leaderboard. Sitting around the table is Frederick, our chief of marketing. We have Anders, our copywriter, and myself, Adam, responsible for content creation here at Shark Gaming. Finally, we have the omnipotent Yen, our production manager, who's overseeing the project and providing answers to all of our questions. This was in spring 2022, and here we are in September, a few months later. We are no longer able to rush to the top of the leaderboard trying to get there before everyone else gets their hands on the 3090 Ti. So scratch that plan. Instead, we decided to focus on building the ultimate gamer PC that's not only strong but also pretty and can fit on your desk. So to recap, build an insane computer with no budget. We're choosing components based on gaming performance, and it doesn't hurt if it looks good. And by that we mean glowing in 16 million colors. We are still trying to make it to the list, but we are probably not gonna make it to the top 20. We will still try though. We were not setting out to settle with anything, so we scoured the hardware market for the best of the absolute best to make this the greatest gaming PC of all time. The legendary i9-12900KS was our choice as the processor. We needed the 3090s with the most RGB, so we obviously went with a pallet game rock. We chose Kingston Fury and got 32GB of DDR5 6000MHz memory. RGB of course. We kept the Kingston combo going and chose the ultra-fast NVMe's Kingston Fury Renegade 1TB Gen 4. To handle CPU cooling, we chose the Noctua DH15S Chromax air cooler. A shark build is nothing without its RGB case fans, and no one does it better than Lee and Lee. So three sets of SL120 fans, please. To power everything, we chose EVGA with its insane 1600 watt 80 gold rated power supply. And finally, the Asus Maximus Extreme Z690 motherboard to support all of our very demanding hardware. We build computers for regular consumers, so that's what we are building here, only it's gonna be a bit more potent. We looked into different cases. Some were impossible to get and others were just too weird. Instead, we decided to keep it cool and somewhat low profile. We considered our new silent void case, but decided against it since it's made for, you know, normal builds and not 23090 Ti in an SLI bridge. Very few cases can actually handle that. We decided to go with the All-Star, Lian Li O11 Dynamic, the same case we built our legendary RG Beast in. In regards to the CPU, did we want to go with the Threadripper, a CN processor or the Intel 12900KS? While Threadripper and CN processors can be used for gaming, these are server CPUs. Whole lot of cores, but their single core performance is not that great. We wanted the best gaming CPU, and 12900KS felt like a perfect choice. Now this was decided before AMD released their 7000 series, so at that point the 12900KS was the superior CPU for a gaming build. When you look at the Time Spike Stream leaderboard, you see many of the top contenders using Xeon processors and thread rivers. So in these benchmark settings, it is safe to say that you will get better results with the server CPUs. And now the build process begins. All right, folks, we are ready to start the build process of this amazing machine. Usually I'm in front of the camera, but today I am leaving the scene to uh, two of the certified builders here in the, in the building. We have Yen, our production manager, and we have Silas, our Q&A technician, both really, really uh, talented guys when it comes to building PCs. So I am gonna step back and leave it to you guys.
you tell me why we're googling, Silas? We are googling uh, to make sure we use the correct standoffs uh, for the CPU cooler. Found out I need the blue spacers. You, uh, you called them uh, standoffs call stand before. before. They're spacers. They're spacers. Are we going low noise or high performance? We're going high performance. <laughs> uh, how is that even a question? Ian is guaranteeing us that we haven't broken anything yet. Uh, this would be uh, this would be one of the builds that we don't want to break anything on, For sure. because we only have one of each part. So. Uh, other than the <laughs> things that we have two of, but we need both of them. <laughs> What's on your back? <laughs> it's just on a cup. Go by now. <laughs> <laughs> Linus Tech Tips, we challenge you to build a better off-the-shelf PC than we are building right here. This one, and it seems that we are orientating it this way, and I think maybe we want to change the orientation. Um, Silas, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Do we want to have uh, upwards? No. Or do we want? We want backward. Yeah. yeah. Then we need to change. The, so that that's why one, it's very yeah. important to like do a test bidding of this. So you can see the the standoffs here. They align with these two, which makes this uh, upward. It helps sometimes on on the heating, um, but because we have these two 3090 Ti's, there's a lot of heat generated down here. So we actually want the cool air from this area instead. So we are want to put it this way instead so it takes the cool air from this area and push it out and then the hot air doesn't affect it as much. Yeah, they do not fit. It does fit without the fence, but there's no room for the fence. I actually think this is too chunky. We went into an issue with the with the sizing. When we did the testing on this, we did it on a test bench and not in this specific chassis. Um, it should be able to fit, but the issue is in is this little on off key is too big for us to, to push in the last the last piece. So we might have to change either the chassis or change the power supply. No. No, we don't like this. I don't like this. This is not quality. This is. Uh, we might break a cable here. Oh, let's take it out. Uh, Can you tell me what happened here? Well, um, again, this little thing was the issue. It should fit, but if we had, if we pushed it in uh, while we tried to put everything in at the same time, it wasn't possible. So what we did was we did one cable at the time behind this little bracket. And then we got it to fit. Just one at a time until there was enough room to push it in from the other way.
and here it is. The most powerful gaming PC we've ever built. It has no name yet and we are yet to see its full potential. Next video we'll be testing it to see how high we can climb up the leaderboards and how much FPS we can get in Minesweeper. And are we actually going to put it in the freezer? You might want to subscribe so you don't miss out on our next episode.